Hey, g'day, I'm Toby, and this is my channel, Toby Fire and Steel. So recently I just finished off a pretty cool little knife with an octagonal handle, so eight-sided handle. It's a wah handle, which is a Japanese style. Several people have asked me, how do you get the facets so symmetrical, and how do you get them even? So there's a couple of ways uh, I do it. Nowadays I tend to do it by eye, but once upon a time I did it all drawing lines, uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so it's pretty clear that I haven't drilled a hole in this, which is because of the fact this is a demonstration for you guys. It's not a full wire handle build. If you'd like to see me do a full wire handle build, happy to do that. I have got a couple of uh, similar types of handles to a wire handle, and I'll put in a video just above here. So this block isn't 100% square, and I work that out when I'm marking it. I end up with the lines not quite being perfect so on one end which essentially means I want to just skim a little bit off. You need the either side of the block to be completely parallel to each other and the block to be completely square, or at least either sides to be parallel to each other. So you can see here, all I'm doing is using my height gauge to mark a line along where it's slightly chamfered on one side. So basically, I just want to find out now exactly how tall the section of my knife on the transition to the timber is going to be. So I can allow that uh, much of a gap where there would be a hole already. So I've got 17 mil there. So I'm just going to divide that in half basically and then scribe that in using the hole in the middle as the fulcrum point. Now that I know the height of the actual transition from the blade I can just add a few mil and this is just personal preference you work out say it's 17 mil you might want a mil or two of the handle either side so you might go 19 20 21 mil which is what I've done here just a little bit more and then scribe that in again now obviously the width isn't going to be quite the same you want to make that a little smaller well I personally do now I've jumped back to my height gauge the height gauge is great here because we've got essentially exactly the same amount of wood either side of that center line we can mark where we want our handle to finish so if you want you to have a 30 mil wide block at one end and a 20 mil wide block at the other you can draw those on now which really help you to grind to the lines and get it right every time so i've chosen my size at this end and then i'll do a smaller measurement at the other end where it's going to be joining the blade As you can see, it's square at both ends. One square is larger than the other, which is exactly what I wanted. So the butt end is obviously about eight mil, 10 mil bigger than the other end. Now this is the process I use to start knocking my corners off. I just use my height gauge and sometimes I pack out one end like this, which essentially means that I can change the angle of that corner I knock off if I don't want them to all be exactly the same which I never do. Uh, I kind of think making an actual perfect octagonal would be almost easier, but I like them to be very nice in the hand, ergonomic, generally a bit thicker on the top half than the bottom half, and a bit taller on the bottom half than on the top half. So I just use different things, like bits of brass or whatever, to adjust that angle. And you'll see I do do this, and then I don't like the angle and I decide actually to go completely square on every corner and it comes up really pretty. These lines aren't completely necessary, but it just gives you something to eyeball whilst you're grinding. So 
So now this is the bit that really should be difficult, but it's not. You just essentially start grinding down, and when you're new at this, take it very slow, keep watching both sides of the line, keep taking it away. If we see that you're getting too near the line, just adjust the pressure a tiny bit on one left or right hand side so that you end up chewing away to the same. And it sometimes helps to flip it upside down and just keep checking your lines on the top and bottom, make sure you're not uh, drifting off, taking too much off. The thing is, if you do take too much off, you can always just sort of touch each other corner and just take a little bit more off and just keep looking down at it and make sure it's right. You can adjust it slightly. But if you follow the lines, it should be perfect and easy. All I'm doing here is hitting it on a bit of 240 grit, just essentially to show you how I do my process of sanding. So I start on a nice flat bit of anything. This is stone, uh, granite on a 240, and I just roll. So I do one facet, roll over one click, another facet, roll over one click. It actually takes me minutes to go through a full progression right up to a thousand. So this is a product sent to me by Constantia, which is an Australian made product, I believe. It's definitely Australian owned product. They do a red oil, a Chinese oil, and then like a buffing compound. I've not used the buffing compound, but I've used the Chinese oil and I've used the red oil. And they both bring up a gorgeous, deep sort of lustful, lustful, is that the right word? Anyway, a very, very nice finish. I don't use it on knife handles a great deal, mainly because of the fact that, oh, there's some because of the fact that I use Uncle Bjorn's handle finish. But this stuff, chopping boards, tabletops, any other wood that you want to protect, amazing. And obviously this red oil just really gives it a good luster. There's the word, luster. And just to add to it, smells incredible, this stuff. The workshop smells amazing all the time. In fact, I use this, not the red oil, but the uh, Chinese oil, on all my blocks before I put them on my website. So. When I, I just sand them down to like a 240 grit and then put it on there and you get to see what it's going to look like when it's finished. So this is the knife that's in question that everybody asked about how I get my lines so straight and that sort of thing. It's a pairing knife. It's almost for sale. I think I'm going to make a Gyoto as well with a matching handle and then put them up as a set. So if you're interested in any of my pairing knives or anything like that, please shoot over my website www.tobyfireandsteel.com forward slash shop. And if you like this video, please subscribe, like the video, and press the little bell button because it means you get to see my videos in the future. That said, if you like the things I do, I do a podcast as well. Jump over to Toby Fire and Steel on YouTube, Facebook. Hang on, you are on YouTube. Facebook, uh, social media platforms of every description, and the podcast world. That's about it. Thanks. Have a good weekend.